Welcome to eWay Podcasts, a podcast from the world of CRM, business, and entrepreneurship. Today, we'll talk about a technique called brainstorming. We'll go over 10 important principles to keep in mind for an effective brainstorming session, and we'll also explain how to evaluate the session correctly. And as a bonus, we'll present a so-called brainwriting method. Let's get into it. Are you introducing a new service concept, a new product to the market, or are you planning an awesome event for your customers? Do you need a plethora of good ideas? Then organize a brainstorming session. But what is this brainstorming, you ask? Gather up various members of your team. The more diverse the composition is, the better. Each member can have a slightly different view and think of ideas that no one else would. Introduce the problem to your colleagues and let them come up with different solutions. There are no wrong answers during the brainstorming session. You're not looking for one solution. On the contrary, you want to gather as many ideas and solutions to your problem as possible. Brainstorming should let you see the problem from different angles and introduce answers to your question. Creativity knows no limits, but it will be beneficial if you set a few basic rules at the beginning of the session. As a team, agree on principles you will follow and write these somewhere where everyone can see them. These, for example, can state that you won't interrupt each other, that there's a time limit when presenting a given idea, or anything else that'll help you keep the session efficient. So, this is brainstorming in a nutshell and a few rules you need in order to keep the session productive. Let's dig a bit deeper. How do you run a successful brainstorming session? There are 10 rules that you should keep in mind. Let's go over them one by one. First, have a clear idea of what results you expect. Have a question, problem, or issue ready that you need to solve. Do an analysis, gather the necessary documentation, have a look at how a similar issue was tackled by your competition. Also, think ahead and try to have a few ideas ready. And make sure to present this data to all participants at the start of the session so that everyone has all the information to work with. Second, choose a leader for the session. The leader will hand out all the information and explain the purpose of the brainstorming before the session. The leader is also responsible for starting the session and for making sure that it runs smoothly. They are there to make sure that participants are not interrupting each other, that only one idea is being discussed at any given time, and to moderate the discussion so that everyone has a chance to speak. Third, think about who should participate in the session and why. Make sure that all participants know each other and their role in the company. Talk to each member before the session and tell them why they were invited and what you expect from their participation. Fourth, appoint a person that will take notes. There are ideas flying left and right during each brainstorming session. That's why it's important to choose a fast person for note-taking. Someone who can catch each idea and write it down. You don't want to interrupt the flow of the session. Fifth, choose the right place. You don't have to meet in a meeting room every time. Go out if the weather allows it, or find a quiet coffee place. Basically, find a creative space that everyone will enjoy brainstorming in. Today's technology allows you to be online literally everywhere. Sixth, prepare the necessary tools. Make sure that the participants will have everything they need, be it a board, notepads, papers, pencils, screen and projector, tablet, or laptop. You must make sure everything's ready and available on site. Don't forget about light snacks and, most importantly, plenty of coffee and fresh air. Seventh, there are no bad ideas. Remember, it's a brainstorming session, not a strategic meeting. You don't need to come up with an actual solution. It's an enjoyable tool, and that's exactly how the session should be approached. Eighth, don't criticize other people's ideas. There is no place for asserting your dominance in a brainstorming session. 
If you immediately start to evaluate every idea, you'll interrupt the flow and change the course of the whole session. And the person whose idea was evaluated can feel intimidated and just sit quietly in a corner for the remainder of the session. Ninth, elaborate on other people's ideas. Someone has an idea, and more often than not, the whole group follows up on it and develops it into an actual concept. Make sure to support them. The development of ideas is one of the key principles of a successful brainstorming session. Tenth, quantity over quality, always. The more creative ideas you get, the better. A brainstorming session should introduce a lot of ideas. The quality and feasibility of individual ideas doesn't play a huge role at this point. So there you have it, 10 rules for effective brainstorming. Let's quickly go over them one more time just to make sure they stick. First, have a clear idea of what results you expect. Second, choose a leader for the session. Third, think about who should participate in the session and why. Fourth, appoint a person that will take notes. Fifth, choose the right place. Sixth, prepare the necessary tools. Seventh, there are no bad ideas. Eighth, don't criticize other people's ideas. Ninth, elaborate on other people's ideas. Tenth, quantity over quality, always. Stick to these rules and your brainstorming session will bear so much fruit that you'll have to be careful not to get overwhelmed. But how do you identify the best ones? Let's have a look at some of the most used methods for selecting great ideas. We already know the 10 rules for a successful brainstorming session. We gathered many great, crazy, bad, and good ideas. How do you evaluate and select the best one? Never decide during the actual session. You want to encourage creativity and to collect as many ideas as possible. On the other hand, when choosing the right solution, you must employ critical thinking. Let all ideas settle for a few days and only then start evaluating them one by one. You can do that with the same team or by yourself as the manager. We recommend following these five steps for the initial selection of ideas. First, remove all duplicates and ideas that copy one another. Then, dispose of all ideas that are obviously silly, not possible to implement, and irrelevant to your problem. As the third step, decide what ideas you can work with. Ask questions like, is it worth it? Can we implement this concept? Do we have a budget and people for it? Is this idea in our interest? The fourth step is grouping similar ideas together. Try to generalize the concepts so they are easier to work with. And as the last step, you must evaluate the ideas and choose the best one. Here are a few simple methods that will help you with the decision. Multi-component voting, affinity diagram, decision matrix, and broad perspective. Let's go over them one by one. First method, multi-component voting. If the decision is based on subjective factors like personal taste, then multi-component voting can be quite useful. You can also choose this method if the participants can't decide on specific output. Go over the proposed solutions in great detail before the vote. You should have as little options to choose from as possible, and these should be highly relevant. Every team member gets the same amount of points, ideally four or five, and they use the points to select the best ideas. All points can be used to support one idea, or people can vote for five different ones with each getting one point, or do any combination they want. Second method, affinity diagram. Group together similar ideas. It will help you with the following analysis and decision making. Moreover, the affinity diagram will give you a clear overview of individual categories that your team should tackle and discuss in detail. Third method, decision matrix. Discuss the pros and cons of each idea and its possible impacts and profits. 
Set criteria for evaluation, like speed, benefits, difficulty, price, risks, or feelings. Score each proposal and select the best ones based on their ranking. You can also have multiple people doing the selection using anonymous forms. Then, the winner is the one idea with the most points. Fourth method, broad perspective. Evaluate the outputs based on how each corresponds to the brainstorming assignment. Ponder on what will be needed for the implementation of each one. Identify the pros and cons of every idea. And feel free to write down how the individual solutions make you feel. Discuss with your team any other factors that you stumbled upon during the session. If you look at the proposed solutions from various angles, you'll see them from a broader perspective, which will make the final decision easier. Multi-component voting, affinity diagram, decision matrix, and broad perspective. These are the four possible methods to evaluate outputs of your brainstorming session. Of course, there are also other methods of how to choose the best idea. You can do a SWOT analysis. Ask yourself the why question until you get to the result, or you can evaluate the pros and cons in detail. The important thing is to be happy and content with the chosen concept and to be able to work with it and execute it properly. Now we know how to evaluate brainstorming outputs. It's important to let them settle for a few days, remove duplicates and irrelevant ones, group up the remaining ideas, ask the right questions, and apply the selected evaluation method on the remaining concepts. But brainstorming is not necessarily always the best tool. If you don't have enough time to moderate a discussion, you can try brain writing. Let's find out what it is. Brainwriting is a quicker form of brainstorming. Similarly to brainstorming, it is used to collect ideas and solutions for a given question or issue. The main difference is in how the two are performed. While brainstorming is basically a discussion, brainwriting takes place on a sheet of paper. All session participants are engaged at the same time, and usually there are even more outputs than during brainstorming. So what does a brainwriting session look like? All participants get a sheet of paper and write down the key question that needs answering. Nobody puts their name down. A moderator and time limit for each round is set. Each round can, for example, be three minutes long, and during this time, the participants write down three ideas they come up with. A strict no-talking policy applies during the round. After the time is over, everyone hands their paper to a colleague sitting next to them. Then, the other person must write down another three ideas or develop the ones that are already on the paper. The moderator tells everyone how the paper should move and sets the required number of rounds and time limits. When the rounds are up, the moderator collects all papers and writes each answer clearly on a board or any other visible space. Then, a discussion follows to produce the best ideas. The outcomes are then evaluated, similarly as outputs of the brainstorming session. In today's episode, we explored what brainstorming is, we discussed the 10 rules to follow to keep the session effective, and explored four evaluation methods to identify the best idea. We also talked about brain writing, which is an alternative to brainstorming. Brain writing is useful if there are a lot of participants of a given session, if your team is a bit shy, or if you just don't have enough time for brainstorming. Now, it's up to you to implement this advice and harvest the potential of your team while looking for the answers that you need. Good luck, and may you never run out of ideas. You have been listening to an eWay podcast. The article was written by Jan Brichta. The podcast was written by Vladana Bakova, spoken by Cliff Coma. For more inspirational audio records, please visit our blog at blog.eway-crm.com, podcast section.